I must know things about Class G airspace, Class Golf. Nah, that's Class Gang, Gang, Gang. Cause if the folks come, you gon' tell them the whole gang. Talk to them, dog. Flipper, let go. Numero uno on the five must know things about Class Golf airspace, Class Gang, Gang, Gang. Is where is it located? It's located near the ground. Easy to remember. G is in ground, G is in golf, G as in class G, gang, gang, gang. It's easy to locate where it is. If you think about airspace, think about an upside down wedding cake. If you ever been chilling at a wedding reception, you sipping on a little something, maybe you got a little Casamigos in the background, they in there, you in there, we in there, everybody looking good, feeling good, and they roll out the wedding cake. It always looks layered and multi-layered as it goes up as big at the bottom, and then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller as it goes to the top. If you were to turn that upside down and look at that wedding cake, that's exactly what the airspace looks like. Small at the bottom, and then as you go up, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. If you were to walk outside of your crib right now and just stand right there on the ground, more than likely, in most places where you are, you're in Class G airspace on the ground. It starts on the ground at the surface of wherever you are and goes all the way up to various levels and we're going to cover those levels now. Numero dos of the five most things that you must know about Class G airspace is that Class G airspace is uncontrolled. What does uncontrolled mean? It means that air traffic control has no authority or responsibility of controlling the traffic in that specific area. It's the wild, wild west, baby. Shoot them up, bang, 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 bang. You're gonna see all kinds of things pop off in the Class G airspace, all types of aircraft. You may see drones up in the air, boom. You may see gliders, all kinds of things just sliding that thing in the Class G airspace. Again, goes back to situational awareness. Knowing which airspace you're in, you know what type of aircraft you may be familiar with seeing, you understand that it's uncontrolled. All these things are important when understanding what airspace you're in so you can fly safely. Numero thrice of the five must know things about Class G airspace is knowing exactly how high does it go up. And it's going to vary, but two easy ways to remember this is just knowing exactly what does Class G butt up against. Think about that wedding cake again. And if it's a small piece of the cake at the bottom, then there's another layer right on top of that, right? And usually in most cases, that next layer is going to be Class Echo. It's going to be Class E. So knowing exactly where Class E starts gives you a clue as to where Class G ends. So if you're looking at an open sectional chart and everything's a nice open area, that Class G is going to be from the ground, the surface, up to 1200 AGL. That's going to be your Class G. Then when you get to that point, you're going to be, of course, in Class E territory. But if you see some of that nice magenta line on that sectional chart, looks like a little lid, a little circle, that's going to give you a clue that that's where that Class E is going to be starting at 700. So if it starts at 700 for Class E, again, where is Class G? At the surface, at the ground. So everything from the ground up to 700 in that little area is going to be, of course, your Class G. So it's either going to go up to 700 if it got that lid on it, Think about that lid. A lid kind of caps things off. So that magenta line, think about it capping it off and say it's going to class, it's going to stop right here. And then 700 up, that's going to be, of course, echo. So that's an easy way to remember that. Open space, no lid, goes up to 1200. Got that lid on it, that purple magenta lid, oh, it's getting capped off at 700 on that thing. So I got to remember that. 700 or 1200 that's going to be a usual common things there's some other subtleties and exceptions with that but that's an easy way to remember exactly where class g ends and where of course it begins always at the ground if you fly in that class g then you are already familiar with that thing here's one of my favorite must know things about class g airspace is that a standard class d airport can change and flip over to a class g airport at a certain time this is why you always want to be checking all of your reference materials and all of your resources if you're planning any kind of flight. You may be on surface value and on face value thinking to yourself, this is a class D situation, but you may be sliding into that thing at a time where that tower is closed. And when it's closed, it may be noted in the charts that this airport is going to switch from class D to class G during this time. You need to be aware of this and notice that all the Class G rules are going to apply, whether that's communication as well as weather minimums required for that airspace. So don't just presume that something is at face value. Always look a layer further for each identifying area and each airport that you're going into to make sure you're getting it right when it comes to Class Gang Gang Gang. Numero cinco is all about the VFR requirements that are required for you to fly in Class G airspace. What are those minimums? In the daytime, it's nice and simple. Just one statue mile of visibility and clear of clouds. That's all that's required for you to float that thing inside of Class G airspace. 
Now, when it comes over to the nighttime, it changes, but it changes to something that you're going to have to remember because it's a pretty standard requirements in a lot of different situations. And that is simply three, one, five, two, three, one, fifty two, three statute miles of visibility, 1000 feet above the clouds, 500 feet below the clouds. And then, of course, 2000 feet horizontal. And you're asking yourself, how can I remember this three, one, fifty two? There are a lot of things that you can use here, a couple of them. One, you can use the standard in aviation. We all are familiar with a small aircraft called a Cessna. 152. So think about that. 152. 3152. Remembering that code and remember that number that way. Another way to remember it is if I know 1,000 feet, 500 feet, and then 2,000 feet, but I don't know in what order they go in, think about ABC. 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, 2,000 feet across, horizontal. That's why you got to keep that visibility in those clouds and those are kind of areas. So that's one way to remember that. The 152 Cessna and then the ABC, they help you remember that 3152 for the requirements that are required for you at nighttime in Class G airspace. A beautiful nighttime exception when it comes to those requirements is if you're just going out one night and you're just going to do a little pattern work at night, it doesn't have to be that 3152. It can be only one mile of visibility clear of clouds if you plan on staying in the pattern and just working that thing working on the night landings so it's just something for you to know if you function out of a class g airspace and a class g airport if you're trying to get up and you're looking at that weather to make sure it's safe for you to get up and fly that thing in the class g airspace boom and here's a bonus tip for what i love about class g airspace you got to heighten your sense of awareness because when it comes to equipment requirements in class g there are no equipment requirements. So don't presume that just because you slide in a certain type of aircraft and you got all these fancy avionics and you got everything going on, that every other aircraft in this airspace has that because it's not required. So just because you have all these fancy devices and people can hear you, that doesn't mean that other aircraft can hear exactly what you're saying over the airwaves and which they have the same navigation tools and things that you got going on when it comes to transponders, two-way radio communications, and all the other things that may be required in other airspace. So this gets you, puts the onus on you to heighten your sense of awareness, to keep your head on the swivel and your eyes always looking out for other aircraft and presume, just presume the worst, presume they can't see you, they can't hear you. This is class G. So you got to be responsible for not only navigating the area, but making sure you stand clear of other aircraft and they're going to be doing the same as well. So always keep that in mind when you float through that class G airspace, that equipment requirements are basically none in this airspace and you're going to see all types of things and it's a nice fun airspace to be in. These are the five must know things about class G airspace. If you fly to class G airport, please hit the comment section down below. Or if you've had any experiences in class G that you love and adore, tell us your story. I want to hear from you. If there's anything I may have missed, please again, hit the comment section down below. Each one teach one as we help each other be safe and better in the air. I love you. One time, one love. We are the best. A hey, pilots worldwide. Good night, baby. I am Donovan Batiste. Hey, this is Leadership Mindset. Big whoa, subscribe to this channel for more leadership, pilot talk, and self-improvement tips, baby. Hey, Lego, class gang, gang, gang.